Hi everybody, welcome to this video on simple assessment with plickers and magnets. My name is Joey Fight, and I'm the founder of thephysicaleducator.com, which is an online resource for phys ed teachers, and I'm also a phys ed teacher here in Montreal, Canada. Now a few years ago, I decided I want to try out these things called plickers cards. I'd heard about them from a few other teachers before, so after I checked them out on their plickers.com website, I decided to order a pack off of Amazon. You can find a link to the ones I ordered in the description below. Now the first thing I did when I got my cards is that I wrote down the numbers of each card on the back of the card. See every Plickers card has a number and having the number on the back of the card just makes it that much easier for students to find their card. This isn't my idea, I got it from some teachers uh, that I follow on Twitter. I'll make sure to link to their bios in the description below. Next, I added colorful spots on each side of the card to make it easier for my younger students to identify which side is which. I got this idea specifically from Kevin Tiller, you can find his Twitter link in the description below. Now the reason it's important for students to know which side is which has to do with the way that plickers work. Plickers help students answer multiple choice questions from the teacher. When the teacher asks a question, the student thinks about their answer and then holds their plicker card with the side representing their answer pointing up. The reason this works is because it changes the way that the code on the front side of the card is represented. See, once all students have figured out their answer, they show their code with their right answer pointing up, the teacher takes their iPad and using the Plickers app, quickly scans the class. It's really, really fast, it's just like magic. And as the teacher scans, the app picks up all of the students' answers. It will even give a report to the teacher to let the teacher know who answered what and how many students got the question right. With my cards ready to go, I then decide to make a Plickers poster. Now I made this look legit, but it's not. It's really just something that I made for my teaching. You can't find this on the Plickers website. Um, the reason I made this is because I needed something that would help my students understand what number they're assigned, and also just making that visual makes it really, really fast for everyone. To be honest, I totally fell in love with this poster and decided to use it a lot in my teaching for non-Plickers related things too, which I'm about to talk about now. Last year I started thinking about how I can make assessment quicker in my class. I wanted something very practical that would work for all my classes and that I could set up quickly and easily between lessons. I eventually got the idea of using magnets with my magnetic whiteboard. I picked up some small round magnets and some round stickers on Amazon. I'll link to these below. So here's what I did. I took the magnets and took the stickers and made sure that I color coded all the stickers. I'll explain why I have different colors for each of my stickers. I then numbered all of the stickers. Each number obviously representing one of my students' numbers from class. Now the idea here is that I would have my Plickers poster up on the whiteboard and have every magnet assigned to a student based on that student's number. I'll use these in all kinds of different ways. For example, if I have the critical elements of skill on a poster on the board, I'll ask the students to go place their magnet underneath the skill they're working on and the critical element they're focusing on. This helps them remember what they're working on and helps me understand what their goals are. Another way in which I use these is I'll use these with our learning roadmaps in class, which are the colorful rubrics that I create for my phys ed units. I've blogged about these before, I'll share a link in the description below to my blog post. So the learning roadmaps help my students understand how to master all the different outcomes we work on in class by breaking each outcome down into four levels. Not yet, getting there, got it, wow. As the students work in class, I'll ask them to go place their magnet beside the level that they think they're currently working at or I'll place the magnet there to let them know where I believe they are so that they know what they need to do next to get to the next level and continue learning. I just want to share one last quick example on how I can use these magnets. So for example, we have our Borg rating of perceived exertion that we worked on during our fitness unit. This shows the students the different zones that they can be working in during aerobic exercise. We'll set a target zone that we'll all strive for as a class, and as the students exercise and check their heart rate, they'll place their magnet on the zone in which they're currently at based on their heart rate. Because this magnet system is so quick, students can quickly do this and get right back to exercising. So that's it for this video, just two simple tools that I use for assessment in my teaching. If you'd like to learn more or get more ideas, be sure to check out thephysicaleducator.com. Thanks so much for watching and happy teaching!